Um, now, how did the early followers of Jesus differ from contemporary Christians? Well, if we look at the average contemporary Christian, the Christian in modern day times, there's a very strong, firm belief in the Bible. In the first century, the people who listened to me, there was no, there wasn't, there wasn't much of an understanding of a written word. They understood that the, there was the Torah, the mm -hmm. first five books of what is now the Bible, written by Moses. Many of them didn't, weren't uh, lettered enough to have read them. Mm. And so, you know, they relied on the priests and so forth to, to tell them what those particular words said. Some of them would go to the synagogue uh, during the week and on the weekends and, uh, and they would, you know, listen to the presentations of, the, of the, the minister of the synagogue at the time who would read passages of the prophets or read passages of the Torah. And so they would come to understand through the word of mouth what those particular books said. So in that regard, they, they were sort of similar in the sense that there was a book that they were attempting to follow, for, but they, it was a Jewish, it was mm. the Jewish religion they were attempting to follow. Mm. And Christians today have a very firm opinion generally about whether the Bible is completely God's word or not, whereas these people did not. Uh, have a firm opinion that okay. the Torah was God's word. They felt it was the channeling, you know, the information that came from Moses, from through through Moses from God. But they didn't feel that it was restrictive in the sense that they felt there was more to it. Yeah, than that. yeah. So I feel that's one quite primary difference, in that they had a stronger openness generally. And here I'm talking about the average person, mm. not not the average. Uh, Pharisee or Sadducee, because the average Pharisee or Sadducee had a very firm opinion about what God's word was and had a very firm opinion of the Torah and as a result had a very firm opinion that I was, I was heretical. Mm. And that is pretty plain if persons read even what is recorded in the Bible about the history of my time. But uh, so that's one sort of difference. It's similar, but there in Christians today, there's a very rigid, there's a lot of rigidity about the Bible being God's word. Whereas in the first century, there was less rigidity about the Torah being God's word in amongst the people who generally listened. Um, in the first century, there was a much more physical existence um, than now. So, you know, as you can imagine, mm. everyone was eking out a living mm. and, uh, and quite often that involved a lot of their attention um, and nowadays there's a lot more free time. So, mm, <laughs> you know, a, right. the average Christian has a lot more free time on their hands than the average person who listened to me in the first century had. Unfortunately, free time can cause a lot of trouble, mm. as you're aware, and, and I think a lot of Christians are aware that, you know, sometimes they use their free time in ways that distract them from their own faith. But, uh, but also it gives you time to study, it gives you time to understand, it gives you time to contemplate which wasn't always available to mm. people in the first century. Mm. Um, another way that there's quite, uh, in terms of emotionally, very similar emotions, uh, very similar emotions. The Jews had this viewpoint that they were the promised. Yes. They, they were the uh, children of God. They, yes. were, they were, you know, the, the, the children that God selected. And the Christians today have the same concept or idea that mm. they are the children God selected. Both concepts are incorrect, by the way, mm -hmm. but, uh, but they are the concepts that exist. So there are very many parallels mm. between the Jewish faith and speaking to people with the Jewish faith as there are now speaking with people in the Christian faith. Mm. A lot of parallels. Um, in the first century, they didn't have a large concept about emotions. Uh, uh, you know, they were eking out a living and... And they lived in their emotions more fully probably mm. than people today. Yes. In other words, if yes. they felt angry, they'd express yes. their anger usually a lot more rapidly than a person will today. Um, so in some cases that was good because you got to see the, the real person um, rather than the facade that you see mm. often today. Um, but in some cases it wasn't good because they acted in manners that mm. degraded their own condition mm -hmm. and that caused all sorts of moral issues for them in their progress. So... The average Christian today is probably in a, in a better moral state okay. than the average person that I spoke to in the first century. Mm.
And I feel the state of ethics, though, is very similar to people in the first century. Uh, because, uh, and I feel the state of ethics hasn't changed much in the last 2,000 years since I've been observing the Earth, mostly because people become emotional about their belief systems and then all the ethics they have fly out the window yeah. in, that, in, in their emotional state. And so the state of ethics is quite different. Um, there were, obviously, the environment I lived in in the first century, women were not treated very well. Mm. Uh, it was a major problem, in fact, mm. for the souls of men. Uh, that women weren't treated very well because men were often the perpetrators of violence towards women, which degraded the men's condition emotionally and, and, and their soul condition. So men today are usually, in a, particularly Christian men, are usually in a much better emotional condition. Although, that being said, they still have many of the same issues that the men of the first century had towards women. And this is why some yeah. of the Pauline principles yeah. of, you know, not having a woman teaching in the congregation, for oh. example, mm -hmm. are still present in the Christian faith because mm -hmm. the men want to hold on to these particular principles and they don't honour mm. the fact that actually men and women are equal from mm. God's perspective. Mm. And this was something I tried to teach quite strongly in the first century without much success at all. Yes. Um, yes. Because there was so much of a heavy sway and mm. a heavy bent towards men dominating women. Mm. So, so the men today are probably a lot more open to having an equal relationship, yeah. whereas the men in the first century more saw their women as possessions, mm -hmm. uh, very much so. It was very rare, in fact, to find a man mm -hmm. who didn't see his woman as a mm. possession. And, um, and that, that, was a main pro mm. that was a major problem. It was not only a major problem for the men, but it was a major problem for the women in terms of hearing divine truth and listening to it because they could hear that I was saying that men and women were equal and then they'd go home to their men yeah. and start to try to, uh, yes. to, to live that kind of life. And, of course, the men would become violent and, and many mm. women died oh. at the hands of their husbands as a result oh. of hearing divine truth in the first century. Oh. So oh. there were many, many more women martyrs of... of divine truth in the first century than men, particularly while I was alive. Mm. Um, and many of them died while I, while I was alive um, as a result of the amount of rage that was in the men towards women and the amount of control that the men had. Mm. So if a woman listened without her man, she, she risked a very, oh. very large amount of rage and violence as a result. And this is why in the, there are comments of me making things, comments in the Bible about, you know, that I came to bring, to make enemies between family members. And that's not what I actually said. What I actually said was that the, that the truth would create mm. enemies within the family mm. because some family members would want to hold on to unloving belief systems. So, yeah, that was the primary thing that happened back then. So, there were, so the women nowadays, of course, have a lot more say what happens in their family. Absolutely. Particularly in Western mm. countries where Christianity generally is practised. And they have a lot more autonomy mm. than they had in the first century. So the life for women, and particularly women who were listening to what I was preaching in the first century, was very, very different to women listening now. Mm. I know within my own church... Um, because of the lack of priests and in you know, very isolated areas, women are taking on roles of, of ministry that mm -hmm. was never even heard of a, a generation ago. Exactly. And um, it, it just seems to be such a liberating, wonderful direction forward. It's an excellent direction forward. Yes. It's a, um, it's a direction that mankind should have been following <laughs> for many thousands of years. It seems to have taken so long. It has because there has been, and there has been cycles between men and women as mm -hmm. well, where historically, right, right through ancient history, mm. sometimes women were dominant and, mm. uh, and the men were subservient and the men's role was basically procreation, serving the woman for sexual purposes and providing all of their material needs. And, uh, and then, of course, men got very angry about that role <laughs> and, uh, and they, the, the, they then flipped over. And then by the time of my arrival in the first century, obviously, we, li we lived in a very male-dominant society. And it still is. Mm. Uh, if you look as a whole, mm. the earth, it still is a very male-dominated society. Um, and, of course, there are many women who are very angry about that now, mm. just as there were many men angry about the previous yes. conditions. 
Um, and there are many men spirits, uh, women spirits who are angry about mm. that now, who are trying to change that. And anger in either direction towards the genders, is, to the other gender, is obviously never going to result in any sure. positive growth on the planet. So that is something that I wanted to correct right from the first century. And Mary was often present mm. in all of my discussions with men. Mm. So as you know, you've visited some Arabic, Arabic countries now. Uh, you know that there's still a separation of men from women Absolutely. generally. And you know that when men get together, they don't like the women being present yes. necessarily. And that's really what it was like in the first century. Yes. So me having Mary right next to me in every single discussion yes. was a major confrontation. Yes. And as a result, there was a lot of hatred and an animosity projected mm. towards Mary because they felt, many of the men felt that I was controlled by Mary. Mm. They didn't understand that actually, no, I was driving mm. the desire to have Mary with me mm. because of trying to confront this uh, mm. very big uh, emotional issue mm. that these men had in the first century. So that is a very different thing to nowadays. Like nowadays, you know, myself and Mary can sit in front of a group of Christians with no trouble whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, if, myself, if I went along to, to, to a group to speak, often the men would be outraged. Uh, before I even opened my mouth, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just because of my bringing uh, a woman along with wow. me. And many of them, of course, knew Mary's past as well, mm -hmm. which, which made it even worse for them. Mm. And, uh, and I was constantly addressing those issues with them, but it made very little effect. Mm. And, and to such a point that ones like Peter raped Mary mm. after my death, for example, mm. in, in his anger with mm. women, in his anger with Mary, and his anger about a lot of things. And as a result, uh, many of the so-called apostles uh, did not have as enlightened position mm. as what many people today assume. Yes, mm. yes. That was an eye-opener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel uh, other ways that people were different um, were, were more to do with physical things than, than f emotional things because the reality is emotionally mankind... Mm. hasn't changed a huge amount mm. in that time, unfortunately. Mm. Um, and emotionally, the, there's pretty much similar emotions in people today as there were back then, with one exception, and that is there is a layer of facade over the top of them. Mm. So, you know, back then, m you know, men could get away with, uh, have some vigilante violence, for example. Mm. Nowadays, a person would be thrown in jail, generally, mm. for such a, an action. And so he can... And a man might feel like it, but doesn't do it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things I feel people do to, uh, like that today where they feel like doing something, but they don't do it. Whereas back then it probably would have been done mm, mm. Um, and, and often was done. So you got to see the real person mm. yeah, through that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yes. So uh, these are, uh, yeah, just, mm. but, but aside from that, uh, not a huge amount of different, uh, I feel relating to people then is very similar to relating to people now. <laughs> yeah. Excellent.